أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفع بما علمتنا وزدنا علما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته MashaAllah, it is uh, truly an honor to see so many brothers here tonight, MashaAllah. Um, may Allah Azza wa Jal increase our muhabba, our love for one another. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this gathering. Wallahi, it is truly an honor and privilege to enter the house of Allah. And bear in mind that not anyone can enter the masjid. Anyone who enters this masjid is a clear sign that Allah loves you. And it's a clear sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited you and you have accepted the best of invitation and that is to attend the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even greater than that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and I the opportunity to sit down and to speak about deen, to speak about Quran, to speak about the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to speak about akhirah, to speak about important matters that relate to our future, to speak about the reality of this world. So inshallah ta'ala, my dear brothers and, and, and sisters, just bearing in mind that there is a lot of research, there's a lot of work. Many a times people think that Imams are just, you know, supermen, just come, talk, walk away. But the amount of research that goes into the khutab that we give, Inshallah, I request your du'as, inshallah. Now, we all know that if a person wants to build a house in this world, will it come for free? If you want to buy a house, let's choose Karabi. Because huh? Karabi, the prices are you know, nice and high. Or Holland Park. Is someone just going to give you a house just like that? I don't think so we have such generous people that live in our time that's prepared to give us a house free of charge. Here you go, Akhi Samir. Here's a house for you. You can stay in Woodridge. This is a house free of charge. You won't find that happening. So in order for us to have a house, we have to make an effort. True. Many a times a person goes to maybe Efsol or, or Amana loans to get a loan, an Islamic loan. They borrow that money and then a lot of effort is required. They'll tell you, you have 20 years to pay off this house. And in that 20 years, you are prepared to work day and night, 12 hour, 15 hour, work on weekends to pay off that house. True? So in order to achieve that house, an effort is required. Likewise, my dear brothers and sisters, our life in this world, is not baseless. We are here for a purpose. And we need to constantly remind ourselves of this purpose. What is my purpose of being created? Why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed me here on this dunya? Have I been placed on this dunya to build a house made of clay? To spend $400,000 and build my house spend 60 years or 30 years paying off a house and by that time I have back problem and then I pass away and then I pass that on to my children and when they pass away they pass it on to the is this the main purpose of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us no my dear friends Allah has created us for a greater purpose Allah ta'ala says in surah al-dhariyat وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah says, I have not created man and jinn except for my worship. Except that we recognize Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to recognize the fact that we have to leave this world one day. True? Regardless of what religion you follow, Regardless of what background you come from, we all understand the fact that we have to leave this world one day. True? We all have to die. From the earth we were created, and to the earth we will return. But what happens from there? And in Islam, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very clear. And my dear brothers and elders, part of being a Muslim and part of our belief is that we believe Part of our belief is that we believe that there exists Jannah, that there exists Jahannam, that there exists the day of reckoning. This is part of our aqeedah. We have to believe because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made mention. If you live a righteous life, and as Dr. Azhar mentioned, everything that we do in this world is to please that creator who created us, to obey his commandments, and to follow in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in return, if we are to obey the commands of Allah, and if we are to follow in the footsteps of the prophets, the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam, Allah has prepared for us our real home. Our real home. And our real home, my dear brothers, wallahi is paradise, is heaven, is paradise. And we are striving in this world to attain that paradise. Allah says, Allah defines what is success. This is najah. This is the true success. In today's time, a person, maybe he's not praying salah in the mosque, he's got no connection with Allah, and then he says, Alhamdulillah. I have paid off my house. Oh, mashallah, congratulations. You are a very successful man. Because why? You have paid off your house. And inshallah, it wasn't in riba. This is very common in today's time. Oh, this person, he owns X amount of properties. Sometimes, you know, we, we see a normal musalli, we want to put two fingers out. Assalamu alaikum. And if it's a person of status, it's a rich man. Assalamu alaikum. We give that extra muhabba right, to show the, the extra love. Subhanallah. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned that I have prepared such a jannah. I have prepared a paradise for who? There is a particular category of people for the people that are pious. The abrar. For people who have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma la aynun ra'at. That no eye has ever seen. Think of the most beautiful attribute that you've ever seen on the face of this earth. Jannah is far much greater than that. Wa la udhunun sami'at. Jannah is something that no ear has ever heard of. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ Jannah is something that the heart, the mind cannot fathom. It is something beyond our understanding. And this is the Jannah each and every one of us must strive for. Instead of striving for paying off these interest loans, let us also focus on our Jannah. And inshallah, in today's lecture, of course, we cannot cover because inshallah, I want to go through the detailed explanation from the Quran and the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding every aspect of Jannah. And of course, one Qiyamul Layl program will not be sufficient. So inshallah, over the next three Qiyamul Layls, we are going to speak about this topic in fine detail. With the intention, insha'Allah, this should motivate us to become better Muslims, better human beings. And insha'Allah, by understanding the details of Jannah, this should motivate us to do more for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to increase us in Iman, 
Will we keep this intention? Say inshallah brothers. This is our niyyah. This is our intention. This is the, the, the reason why we have chosen this topic. Because we want to understand, we want to be motivated by this topic. So that we can do the right thing and prepare and build and inshallah receive the highest levels of paradise. You know, some people came to me when I spoke about Jannah in one of my tafsirs. And I spoke about the muqarrabun, the people who will be the closest to Allah and they will have the highest level of Jannah. The anbiya and the pious, the real, the awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah. So this person came to me and he said, Imam, you know what? If I get the smallest Jannah, I'm happy. If I get the smallest Jannah, I'm happy. So if I were to tell you, if I give you a bucket of pus, you'll be happy with that. If you live in a shack, you'll be happy with that. When it comes to this dunya, we don't say that. We don't say that. A person won't say, you know what? Give me a very basic house in, uh, okay, in Beanley. Because Woodridge now is, you know, it's now come to another level since Lex Creek has uh, established itself here, mashallah. Right. A person won't say that, oh, I'm happy with a place in Beanley or in Dara or Oxley or whatever the case may be. No. So why is it when it comes to Jannah, you say that, oh, I'm happy with the, the leftovers. If I'm given the lowest level of paradise, I'm happy. No, my dear brothers and sisters. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned that when you ask for paradise, ask for Jannatul Firdaus. Ask for the highest level of paradise. Like a person says, you know what? Ya Allah, grant me a Mercedes Benz, the latest model. But Ya Allah, if you give me BMW, I'll be satisfied. If you give me BMW, I'll be satisfied. Or maybe a Toyota RAV4, I'll be satisfied. When it comes to Jannah, my dear brothers, we need to set the bar, the bar extremely high. And inshallah, we get genital for those. Because as believers, we should always be positive. And we must strive to reach heights in taqwa, which will result in us attaining Jannah, inshallah. So inshallah, we are going to go through some of the pointers. And inshallah, we will discuss different various aspects of Jannah. And inshallah, slowly, slowly, we will go through the ahadith and the beautiful Quranic ayahs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes our final abode inshallah. And while you are listening to the hadith, remember, dear brothers and sisters, it is not a fairy tale. What did I say? It is not a fairy tale. It is the words of Allah. And it is the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is absolute. This is the real deal. This is something that each and every one of us, inshallah, will attain. So when we are listening, listen attentively and picture yourself. Picture the words of Allah. Put yourself in that situation and inshallah, enjoy the ride. The first highlight that I would like to speak about is the actual soil of paradise. You know, in this world, we see various different soils sand cement right okay cement maybe is a mixture of other you know things we have sand we have you know we have dust we have various various soils different colors different thicknesses etc so imam bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions a narration when the prophet of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he embarked on the journey of isra wal mi'raj Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu, he says, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he says, I entered paradise and I saw lights of pearls and its soil was musk. Allahu Akbar. Its soil was musk. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked a question by Ibn Sayyid. He says, Ya Rasulullah, Tell me about the soil of paradise. He said, it is fine white powder. A 
of pure musk. You know, you walk into sand in today's time, it's all dirty and, you know. But the soil of Jannah, it is pure. It is pure powder of pure musk, subhanAllah. May Allah grant it to us, inshallah. Imam Tirmidhi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he states, the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I asked, O Messenger of Allah, from what are the pe are people made? And the Prophet of Allah said that we are made from water. So then we ask another question, from what is paradise built? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, bricks of gold and silver. Bricks of gold and silver. In today's time, people are fighting over dirt. <laughs> people are fighting over dirt. Brother and sister, this is my land, this is your land. In Queensland, half the houses are made of wood anyway. Huh? Huh? The Queenslanders, the Queenslanders, they're all made of wood. Allah has prepared for us. Imagine a dwelling, the bricks made of dahab wal fiddah, gold and silver, motar of fragrant musk, its pebbles and pearls and rubies, and its soil is saffron. Whoever enters in it is blessed with joy and will never be miserable. In today's time, a person buys a house, 300,000. He lives in there for one or two years, then he says, you know what, darling, we need an upgrade. Let's upgrade to a brick house. What house? A brick house from wood house. The next level is brick house. You move to a brick house, you enter the house, you still, you live in there for two, three years, five years. Darling, we need a double story now. So you're never satisfied. Constantly fighting in that house, constantly miserable, sad, trying to find happiness, subhanAllah. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the houses of Jannah, there will be no more sadness. It will be time of joy and happiness. No more sadness. No more fighting with the wife. No more fighting. No more arguing. Everyone will be happy. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. At that point, no more becoming old. Every day you look in the mirror, you put henna on the beard, you know, to get rid of the white hair. Right? We look in the mirror. You know, sometimes we want to dye our hair. We don't want to accept the reality that we're getting old. We sing all the gray hair and then we, we, we dye our hair. But we don't end up dyeing our hair. We also end up dyeing our heads as well. People, they dye their hair, they end up not just dyeing their hair, they dye half their forehead as well with that. <laughs> Subhanallah. In Jannah, you will be youthful. Another highlight, so that is now the soil of paradise. The second highlight of our Jannah, inshallah, is the rivers of paradise. You know, when you go to a river, it's beautiful, isn't it? And if you are able to swim, it's such a beautiful feeling to swim in a river. Just looking at the rivers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created on this dunya is something amazing already in itself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted, has told us that in Jannah, rivers flow from beneath our paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 25, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ And give glad tidings to those who have Iman and do righteous deeds that they will be granted gardens with rivers flowing from beneath them SubhanAllah the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us clearly about the rivers of paradise. He said during his journey of Isra wal Mi'raj, he says, I saw four rivers. I saw four rivers flowing out from beneath the Sidratil Muntaha, two visible and two hidden. I said, O oh, Jibreel, what are these rivers? 
He said the two hidden rivers of paradise and they are the two visible rivers which are the Nile River and the Euphrates River. Hadith comes in Bukhari and Muslim. In another narration in Muslim, Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu, he says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Sihran and the Jihran, the Euphrates and the Nile are all from the rivers of paradise. So how do we qualify this? The ulama mentioned that perhaps what is meant is that these rivers originate in paradise just as mankind did. This hadith does not contradict the well-established fact that these rivers spring forth from unknown sources on earth. If this is not in fact the meaning of this hadith, then it is one of the matters of the ghayb, the unseen, which we must believe and accept because the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us about this. Now, another river of paradise is known as the famous Al-Kawthar. Al-Kawthar, which has been given to our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where Allah ta'ala says, Inna Verily, we have granted you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-kawthar, a river from paradise. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw it and he told us about it. Hadith comes in Bukhari, narrated by Anas ibn Malik. He says, the Prophet of Allah said, whilst I was walking in paradise, I saw a river whose banks were domes of hollow pearls. And I asked, what is this, O Jibreel? He said, this is Al-Kawthar. This is Al-Kawthar, which your Rabb has given to you. And its scent or its mud was of the fragrance of musk. This hadith comes in Bukhari. Ibn Abbas, when he explained the word Al-Kawthar, he says that it means abundant blessings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala, he has compiled a number of hadith in an nihaya volume number two, chapter number four, 246, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he spoke about this river of Al-Kawthar, such as narrated by Muslim from Anas ibn Malik, where he says, where Allah ta'ala mentions, inna a'atayna kal-Kawthar, was revealed to the Prophet of Allah. The Prophet of Allah said, do you know what is Al-Kawthar? And the Sahaba, this was their constant reply, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam, Allah and his messenger know best. So the Prophet of Allah said, it is a river that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised me. And it contains much goodness. In another hadith from Imam Ahmad from Anas, he says, the Prophet of Allah said, I have been given Al-Kawthar, which is a river flowing across the face of the earth. Its banks are domes of pearl and it is not covered. I touched its mud with my own hands and I found that its fragrant musk and its pebbles were pearls. Another hadith also narrated by Anas. He says the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Kawthar, it is a river that Allah has given to me in paradise. Its mud is musk and its water is whiter than milk and it is sweeter than honey. Birds with necks like the necks of the camel will drink from it, subhanAllah. My dear brothers and sisters, the rivers of paradise do not just contain water. There are rivers of water, rivers of milk, rivers of wine and rivers of clear honey, subhanAllah. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Surah Muhammad, Surah number 47, Ayah number 15. مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ فِيهَا أَنْهَارٌ مِّمَّا إِنْ غَيْرِ آسٍ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّنْ لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ طَعْمٌ وأنهار من خمر لذة للشاربين وأنهار من عسل مصفى ولهم فيها من كل الثمرات ومغفر 
Allah says the description of paradise, which the muttaqun have been promised, is that in it are rivers, water, the taste and smell will never change. We can speak for hours about the water of this world. Sometimes tasting like chlorine, sometimes tasting like water bottle, sometimes tasting like yani, you know what I'm talking about. But the water of Jannah, its taste never changes. It's just beautiful, sweet waters. Rivers of milk of which the taste never changes. Rivers of wine delicious to those who drink and rivers of clarified honey. See, Abu Qadr loves honey, he's smiling. MashaAllah, clear and pure, SubhanAllah. Imam Tirmidhi reports with the Sahih Isnad from Al-Hakim, Ibn Muawiyah, that the Messenger of Allah SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is amazing. He says that in paradise, there is a sea of honey, my brother. Huh? Not just a river, there is an ocean of honey, of Asal, Bahr al-Asal, a whole ocean of honey. There is a whole ocean of wine and there is a whole ocean of milk. And there is, of course, a whole ocean of seawater. And from these oceans of honey, of milk, of wine, of water, rivers stream from them, subhanAllah. It's like the ocean of this world. We find various rivers. Likewise, you will have your own personalized ocean that will belong to you inshallah ta'ala he also told us of a particular river in jannah which is called barik which flows by the gates of paradise during the period of al barzakh the time between death and the day of qiyamah the shuhada will stand beside these rivers and Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu, he narrates the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the shuhada, the martyrs, are in a green dome beside the river, the river of Barik. And near the gate of paradise, from which provisions come to them morning and in the evening. So this is a basic description of the rivers of Jannah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant it to us, not just the river, but the Bahar, the ocean, inshallah ta'ala. Say Ameen, brothers. Amen. The second highlight of paradise, besides the river and the ocean, are the springs, the springs of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in paradise there are many springs that provide drinks of different tastes. Allah says, Inna al muttaqina fi jannati wa uyun. Truly the muttaqoon, the pious, imagine. So Jannah is for the pious and the righteous, will be amongst the beautiful gardens and the water springs. Concerning the two gardens which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala says, Fihima aynani tajriyan. Surah Al-Rahman, Allah Ta'ala says, ayah number 50, in them both will be the true springs flowing free. And concerning the two gardens beneath them, Allah Ta'ala says, In them both will be two beautiful springs gushing forth water, subhanAllah. Surah Al-Rahman, ayah number 66. In paradise, there will be two springs from which the Muqarrabun, the people who will be granted Jannah al-Firdaus, they will drink pure, undiluted, like they say in today's time, orange juice, you can have 25% or you can have, will the pulp 100%? And that's what we want. We want the undiluted drinks, pure from the source. So the Muqarrabun, so imagine even for the people of paradise, they're different drinks. And the people of Muqarrabun, who will be granted the highest level of paradise, they will receive a pure drink undiluted, whilst the abrar, which is the second level, will drink water mixed with something else. The first is the spring of kafur. The first is the spring of kafur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Insan, Surah number 76, ayah number 5 to 6. إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ يَشْرَبُونَ مِنْ كَأْسٍ كَانَ مِزَاجُهَا كَافُورًا 
Allah says, Verily, the abrar, the pious, those who fear Allah and they avoid evil, they shall drink a cup of wine mixed with water from the spring of paradise called Kafur. A spring there from the slave of Allah will drink, causing it to gush forth abundantly, subhanAllah. He tells us that the pious will drink from it mixed with something else, whilst those who are close to Allah, they will drink from it pure, undiluted. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mutaffifin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the second spring is of Tasneem. Tasneem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily the Abrar will be delight, will be in delight paradise, on thrones looking at all things. You'll be your own boss. You will recognize in their faces the brightness and the delight. They will be given to drink pure sealed wine. The last day of that wine will be the smell of musk. At the end, you will smell this amazing fragrance. And for this, let all those who strive, who want to strive, hasten towards obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning competing towards good deeds. You want to drink from Jannah, you need to strive for it. You need to make that effort, inshallah. And this is referring to a tasneem. Another of the springs of paradise is called a sal sabil. A sal sabil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Insan, ayah number 17 and 18. Allah Ta'ala says, and they will be given to drink there a cup of wine mixed with Zanjabil, which is ginger. Huh? You like ginger? Oh, don't like ginger. Oh, I love ginger. Ginger, a ginger drink, mashallah. If you know what you're doing, mashallah. It's a very tasty drink, huh? Hey, look. A beautiful, imagine wine mixed with ginger. MashaAllah. Amazing. A spring here called Sal Sabil. So, what was the other one called? Tasneem? Sal Sabil? What was the other one called? Who can remember? Let's see who's, who's listening. Hmm? Kafur. Kafur. MashaAllah. Well done. So you guys are listening. Okay, this will be the last highlight that we speak about, inshallah ta'ala, for today's talk. And that is the palaces and the tents of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build a beautiful dwelling for the people of Jannah. Allah ta'ala says, وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدْنِ a beautiful mansion you cannot compare my mansion and your mansion in Woodridge to the mansion of Jannah a real mansion the real deal subhanallah gardens of everlasting bliss ayah comes in surah tawbah ayah number 72 in some place in the Quran Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala described these dwellings as ghurufat chambers of dwellings Allah Ta'ala mentions, and they will reside in high dwellings in paradise, in peace and security. 
The reward for the slaves of the All Merciful. Allah Ta'ala says, those will be rewarded with the highest place in Jannah because of their patience. In today's time, we want everything, not later, we want it now. Huh? Ring a bell? You want something? You want it now. You want to buy a house? You want it now. You want that car? You want it now. And you'll do whatever it takes to get it now. But with Jannah, it requires hardship. It requires a bit of effort. And we need to have sabr. If you want Jannah, we have to be patient, subhanAllah. Because of their patience, therein they shall be met with the greetings and the word of peace and salam and respect, subhanAllah. Wallahi, my dear brothers, the greater your test on this dunya, the greater your Jannah in the hereafter. If you are going through such calamity, through such hardship, bear in mind the wisdom behind that. The ulama give is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is elevating your status in paradise. And that is the hikmah, the wisdom behind going through hardship subhanallah. Allah ta'ala describes these ghurufat. لَكِنِ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ لَهُمْ غُرَفٌ مِّنْ فَوْقِهَا غُرَفٌ مَبَنِيَّةٌ Allah Ta'ala says, but for those who fear Allah and keep their duty to their Rabb, for them are built lofty rooms, one over another, under which rivers flow. This is the promise of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala and by Allah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُخْلِفُ الْمِيَعَانِ Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, He never breaks His promise. Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah Ta'ala, one of the great scholars of Tafsir, has mentioned that Allah has told us about his blessed slaves who will have rooms or dwellings in paradise. And these will be lofty places, lofty rooms, one above another. Story upon story, well constructed, strong and decorated. The best of architects, the best of builders, right? The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he described these palaces to us, according to a hadith narrated by Anas bin Malik, he says, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, listen attentively brothers and sisters, in paradise, there are dwellings whose inside can be seen from the outside. And the outside can be seen from inside. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has prepared them for those who feed the hungry. Allahu Akbar. And Allah, listen very attentively to this point, and who speak softly, and gently, meaning those who can control their anger. Huh? Very important point, right? Who are gentle, who are fa who fast continuously, who make it a habit to fast every Monday and Thursday, right? And they pray to Hajjud prayer, which inshallah we prepare, we plan to pray tonight whilst others are asleep. This is the paradise. This is the home. This is the penthouse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us. Allahumma ja'alna minhu. May Allah make us of those people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that there are tents or pavilions in paradise. Allah ta'ala says, Allah Ta'ala says the Huris, the beautiful fair females, restrain in where? In their pavilions. Oh, here everyone's starting to smile. These pavilions are wondrous tents made of pearls. Each one is made from a single hollowed out pearl. SubhanAllah. Each dwelling is made, each pavilion is made from a large hollowed out pearl. Not of cement, not of concrete, not of rent, no, none of this dust. SubhanAllah. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, they are 60 miles high. According to some reports, they are 60 miles wide. Bukhari reports Abdullah ibn Qais. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the tent is a hollowed out pearl. 30 miles high in each corner of it is the believer will have a wife whom no one else can see. In another narration, it is also mentioned in Bukhari, 
that the height of this dwelling pavilion will be 60 miles high. SubhanAllah. 60 miles high. And today's time, we are fighting over a quarter acre of land. La ilaha illallah. Muslim also reported by Abdullah ibn Qais, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the believer in paradise will have a tent made out of a single hollowed out pearl, 60 miles long, in which he will have a number of wives whom will he will visit in turn, none of which will see one another. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam also spoke about the characteristics of these palaces and some of his wives and companions, Bukhari and Muslim narrated by Abu Huraira, that Jibra'il came to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, O Messenger of Allah, Khadija is coming, carrying a container of food. When she comes to you, convey to her the greetings and peace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from me. And give her glad tidings of a house in paradise made of brocade in which there is no noise or exhaustion. Bukhari and Muslim also narrated from Jabir, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I entered paradise. I'm getting so excited I have to stand up. I entered paradise where I saw a Rumaysa, the wife of Abu Talha, and I heard footsteps and I asked, what is that? He, Jibreel alayhi salam said, that is Bilal. And I saw a palace with women in its courtyard. And I asked, who is this? They said, it is for Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. I had wanted to go in and take a look at it, but I remembered your jealous. I remember your jealousy where women are concerned. Umar said, that may my mother and father be sacrificed for you, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Would I feel jealous from you? The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us of the way in which a believer may acquire more than one house in paradise. Now we've spoken about the house. How can we get that house? Now, this is an interesting point. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas, he says, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, and I'm sure you must have heard this from me many a times, whoever builds the masjid, whoever builds the house of Allah, even if it be equivalent to the size of a bird nest, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will prepare a dwelling, a home for this person in Jannah. Man bana masjidan fi dunya bana Allahu baytan fi jannah Whosoever establishes the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world and inshallah we are amongst those people anyone that has contributed even a dollar towards the house of Allah in building a mosque inshallah you have secured your dwelling in jannah amen inshallah Another way of attaining this house in Jannah, narrated by Muslim Abu Dawood and an Nasa'i and Ibn Majah, reported from Ummi Habiba. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever prays 12 extra raka'at, meaning nafil salah, every day, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will build for him a house in paradise. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will build for this person a house in paradise. Can I go on for five minutes? Is that okay? Five more minutes, inshallah? Ten minutes? Five minutes? Okay, we'll go. Uh, seven minutes. The light of paradise. Because according to many scholars, prominent ulama, that there is no sun and moon in Jannah. In Jannah, there is no sun and moon, but there is a light in paradise. There is a particular light. Ibn Kathir on commenting on the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and they will have therein their sustenance morning and evening such is the paradise which we shall give as their inheritance to those of our slaves who have been al-muttaqoon and we have constantly come across this word muttaqoon and it's important in order to attain Jannah we need to be insha'Allah striving to become amongst the muttaqeen Allahumma ja'alna minhum so this means something approximate to the times of day and night. It does not mean that there will be day and night. They will know the passing of time 
by the changing of a particular light in paradise. On the same subject, other ulama state that there is no sun and moon as I've mentioned, and there is no day and night, but there will be, there will be a known morning and evening from a light that shines from the direction from the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's arsh. The last point, the fragrance of paradise. Paradise is filled with a pure and beautiful fragrance. You know, sometimes I went to um, New Zealand for those who went to Rotirua, right? And I tell you, that place stinks, man. <laughs> that place just stinks, right? You go there, you pick up these fumes, and sometimes you walk, you drive past certain areas, you're like, oh man, where's that hideous smell coming from? All these smells. No one likes bad smell, true? You walk past the toilet smelling, no one likes that. But in Jannah, all that, all your problems are solved. Because in Jannah, you will only smell the fragrance of Jannah. Paradise is filled with pure, beautiful fragrance, which the believers will be able to discern from the great, from a, from a, they'll be able to smell from a very great distance. Ibn Imaja and Nasa'i reported in Sahih, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever kills a man of the Ahlul Dhimmi, right, unjustly, the non-Muslims living under Islamic rule, whoever kills a non-Muslim unjustly, this is wrong, he will not smell the fragrance of paradise. Even though its fragrance can be smelt from a distance of 40 years travel. Allahu Akbar. 40 years travel, this is how fragrant your Jannah will be, subhanAllah. So this is a basic description, my dear brothers, we've gone through. So inshallah ta'ala, next Qiyamul Layl, we are going to discuss the trees, the fruits of paradise. We are going to discuss the gates of paradise. We are going to discuss that the different aspects of Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah for those. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this lecture motivate us to do more good deeds inshallah. And may this lecture bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and work hard, not just for the cement houses or the Queensland houses, but to work hard for our real home that is made of gold and silver and rubies and pearls. And that is Jannah to Firdaus inshallah. Ameen thumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu wa la ilaha illa anta nistaghfiruka wa natubu.